Okay, guys, welcome back. Trilobites. I got all these tabs open. We're gonna go through some trilobites. I don't know what we're gonna do here. Okay, so trilobite extinction. Most went extinct by end of Devonian. So maybe I should pull up YouTube. Geo girl trilobite. She just made an episode that had a graph. Here it is, this one, this one. So the, most of them went extinct. Here's all these different genome, I don't know, whatever the word is, the families of uh, trilobites. And a lot of them went extinct, approaching the Devonian went extinct. And then uh, finally they went extinct, this one in the end of the Permian. A lot went extinct at the end of the Ordovician. So basically they existed from the beginning of the Cambrian to the end of the Permian, thereabouts. <clears throat> Which, from an Earth expansion process standpoint, this is the time frame when the Earth had yet to rapidly expand. Rapid expansion really began around 200 million, 150 million, especially around 120 million, and crescendoing around like 85 million, and then like really breaking apart the continents at 65 million radiometric dating, which is not actually valid, but just using those dates. Um, so in terms of this regard, it basically, trilobites existed before the rapid expansion of the Earth. And in an ammonite standpoint, it's just because they existed between uh, while the Earth was expanding only, it really points to a highly likely probability that they're actually... Um, Geological in origin. Here's a trilobite I found on the side of a mountain with an eyeball that's very distinct. Another eyeball that's kind of degraded into to a, almost like a positive negative constituent. Where over here it's like conglomerated into like a neutron, where this is like a proton electron. It's not actually like together anymore. It's kind of thing. I don't know if that's how they behave. Just a thought. This spine back here. So it's got. This is on the side of a volcano. So there's a volcano up here. This one is from. Argentina, maybe? Bolivia? Peru, something down there. Chile, even? I think Bolivia. So if we get rid of the, this stuff, if I can find it. It's somewhere over here. I forgot how to find it. Uh, somewhere down here. Somewhere down here, maybe even down here by this one. Here it is, here it is. I know it's by a lake and I could use it as a basis. Just like uh, that one. Okay, there's the volcano, this is a volcano. And then at the edge of the volcano, almost like a current flow went down this way and then ran into resistance and turned. It then created like a leading wave at the front that has eyeballs and a hard third eye, which is interesting. 
So this reason, coupled with all of my Shalagram videos, makes me say, well, and what I just said with regard to the Earth expansion from 550 to uh, around the Holocene is when the Earth expanded. So like that, these occurred in that time frame really points to that they are the results of the Earth's expansion process. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to look at some actual trilobites. So I just went to Etsy, trilobite. And just started opening some. I didn't really look through these yet. <coughs> okay. So here's one. Uh, just looking at it, you know, it's a little odd. Like, how does how would this happen? I don't really know how to explain it from a geological standpoint. But we're just gonna look at the at some of these. I tried my best to like pick ones that I feel based on the description when they say like millions of years old that they're like this is from Morocco a lot of them are from Morocco which kind of points to they're probably real so this is probably real uh, and not like a sometimes they have like replicates so again another trilobite Nothing, nothing about it that's anomalous yet in these, like particularly anomalous where it's like, I this ain't no, this ain't no fossil kind of thing. This one's a little odd. I don't know what to make of it. Trilobite. Uh, I don't think they say where it's from. Like it seems to be like parts of a trilobite. I don't know what to make of this one, but that's that one. This one, okay, this is where one of the ones that is a little anomalous. So we see two trilobites, obviously, but what we also see is where they overlap. Like this trilobite goes over and around this way. Where they overlap here, this trilobite is very influenced by the overlapping. Which currents would do, like, if this is being induced by currents, then, uh, like, that's a thing that might happen, where there is some kind of transition region between the two systems, where it's part of, part of one of the systems in part, like, it's structure, but it's also transitional, where it's, like, not quite, if we look at these ribs, for instance, like, over here, they look like this. Over here, they look a little odd, like there's space over here. Right there, this here, that's maybe there, but this one especially, that's not really going on over there. <clears throat> and then there's little grooves here, like teeth looking thing there. So there's something uh, anomalous here that, like... Maybe from a fossilization standpoint would be explained, okay, because there's two of them, like this one's fossilization process was influenced by the presence of this one, so it wasn't as like maintained across time because of the interface and blah, 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 something of that nature might be proposed, but let's keep going. So this one's got that anomaly. This one's said to be Cambrian period trilobite. Sometimes it's like, is it real? It's hard to say, like, I'll, I just generally am taking their word for it in these, that they're real, that they're authentic fossils, because if I'm analyzing fake fossils that are, like, lookalikes intentionally, that are being sold as if they're real fossils, like, this is so clean and perfect and black, like, the, there's no matrix in it anymore, it's very nice looking, which maybe draws into question its reality but then like there's this crack here there's this crack here and then where they meet is literally right in line with the spine i don't think that's an accident like if this is real that's not an accident and then also there's a crack here that points to there crack here pointing to over here to the like eyeball region which is generally parallel to this one, perpendicular to this one. 
that would be a sign that this is a geological process. Also, this one is a little short. This one's a little short compared to the others. I mean, it might go into the stone there. But there's a, as we go, we'll find more anomalies of that nature. I haven't looked at this in a couple days. Maybe that little, like those two things are a little different. This one's much more pronounced than this one right here, especially. Maybe some things of that nature. Like this right here goes this way around and up. That's very weird. Like it really looks like it generally starting at this fracture goes this way over and then up in a shape that a current takes and then continues up this way over this way and goes into the legs like actually dissects the legs somewhat not even at the body but out into the legs a little bit and creates this little divot that connects back to here down through here like that to me is a sign that it's not a living creature and is the result of geological processes. What exactly was inducing these again? I don't really know, but we're just checking out some evidence. So this one is like turned, so it's like horseshoe crab head like he's got a horseshoe crab looking head which really I, I understand why we think these are fossils like i don't under it's not like i'm like what a surprise that we would conclude them to be fossils and just move on from that <clears throat> but i wonder if this head bend is at a 90 degree angle The feet look kind of conjoined, like it doesn't really have actual individual feet, or whatever those things are called, I don't know what the, like in the last one, like these are more distinct, and a lot of them, they're not like this, but they're still distinct as having like ends, these are very much just coalesced along the boundary, a little bit variation along it there but like too many of them are continuous like right here to it's a little odd in that regard here's one little x shape here i don't know what to make of it another one on it Nothing like so not a fossil to be. There's a little gap there. Like that, that would be explained. Like a broken leg. One of the legs was broken off, and it's not. It was bitten off. Like one of the, one of the things I feel is explained. As is it used to explain this? Is like a bite, literally. Oh, something bit it, and then it, the shell. What these are is the shell of the creature that has like an exoskeleton that it sheds kind of like a snake sh the skin it molts molting or something and leaves behind this um shell that's the idea so that sometimes it shows like the trilobite was bitten and but it continued to live and then it shed its shell and the shell exhibits the missing components that it then grew across time kind of thought pattern is proposed not sure if this one was real it looked a little staggered i mean fine again staggered like this protrudes Six substantially protrudes over here where over here kind of goes inward i mean from a fossil standpoint it would be like the head just kind of broke off and moved over in the process but like if we look at this rock just like the other one it has these fracture lines behind it one right here which is really at the boundary over here largely another one over here that is kind of like at the 
bulk of the body, like the legs protrude past this. Even though this one, the legs don't protrude past it really. And then we can see this leg has like a sharp end, but it really looks like it continued to like over here. Like we can see in the rock itself, a line going across above and below here. Some relationship is present. Like that nature. This one as well. This one I guess as well somewhat. Then whatever's going on here is a little anomalous as well. Like the fact that it has this differentiated material within the head it points to current flows that were flowing that differentiated materials. Around the edge here. Nothing so utterly unequivocal that it would be like, okay, this is not a fossil. Again, it's missing this chunk, which would be said like a bite, but like what bit this? Something bit it like sideways along. Like a long mouth bit it sideways so that it was like exactly here, but it also bit it right starting at the tail, which is a little odd. I would say this is a little off center here and then off center again, like staggered over, over, which maybe is related to a boundary here. Like if it's forming from currents, it's related to a boundary here that then like current was flowing pretty freely in this direction without resistance, but then it ran into, I mean, also with resistance to be shaping this like this, but like without a imbalanced resistance, where as it approached this edge, it looks like it was able to like evacuate the pressure behind this current this way, assuming the current's going this way. Also, this is another crack looking thing right here. Like there was some kind of path for current to flow preferentially down there that then propagated out this way certain materials that created the shape. Another angle, another angle. Also this, this leg like over top these like the back legs this one does not go over top it this does let's see like it's possible that that actually influenced the under leg the leg below in a way where it didn't quite shape it completely like if this leg were to be removed of top it it would be strangely below it would like be too indented it doesn't really make sense that layers adjacent to one another would like hide the structure like it would almost erode away part of it by just having an adjacent layer where it only does it in certain instances though like not along the whole body of it here's another one so an opening down here going on some uh, like spaces up here as well this one at the top is a little oddly shaped i'd say it's not quite as much like these i mean it's at the top so not quite like that one either or those I assume this is two different ones it looks almost mirrored like this looks a little different than this and like it's got a stuff over there and there where this side doesn't it got so whatever went through here went through here as well but just didn't make it through to actually erode in a gap over here where it did over here I don't know if this one's real I mean the Devonian fossil
This is interesting. The legs of this one coalesce completely into this boundary. Like it's all one structure. There aren't legs, really. It's just like a skeleton. That doesn't really make sense to me. It's just another another species or whatever, another branch of the trilobite family that is used to explain the anomalies is what happens. Just lots of lots of detail on this one. Nothing here's a fracture along it. Another one here. Oh. Look at the other side of the rock again. I don't see anything so distinguishable as to be like, aha. This one's so nice and perfect. It's, it's stuff like this that's like, all right, it looks like a fossil, like obviously. But at the same time, here's a crack crack back there. Like the... I wonder that where there's a straight line edge up to this corner. From this corner? Not to this corner, though. Maybe also that, too. But this corner to this corner maybe points right at there. Where this to this corner points more possibly to like where the head begins. Along this along the spine. <clears throat> Meaning there would be a formation process involving this region, like overflowing into this region. Whatever was etched away maybe had some cracks in it too unfortunately because we think they're fossils we don't find any value in the surrounding material so a lot of the like, ammonites and these <clears throat> get the ma matrix removed from them a lot which hides some of the details that would have been relevant to its formation process if it was forming in the rock itself but because we think they're fossils we don't think like that like it doesn't matter it's just it's just happenstance that there's a fracture here that goes into the actual shell like physically extends into the ammonite or trilobite and then it even looks like it goes over and then along here over this way over along here maybe even goes here across here and then over to there which then this really does feed into there. That's that location we were looking at there. So it really, this fracture goes across here, across there, across up there. Happenstance? I mean, if it's systematic, this one's anomalously shaped down here. Also, I don't know if I can find it. If I try to buy anomalous shapes or sh structures. Exploring abnormal. Basically, there's abnormalities. One of them I found that was really compelling was that the eyeballs have different numbers of little dots. Like, substantially different. Like, not a balance. It's not balanced. Their eyeballs are not balanced in some instances. Like, that should, that should happen if they're real living beings. They should have balanced eyeballs in terms of the number of dots on the eyeball. This one, like, how... How did something do this? 
we can see this little thing going on sideways here and then out that way and out that way so it's definitely that essentially uh, the fossil explanation would be that this whole region including this material mousing over right now was not present there was just a gap here and then the shell was retained in the matrix and then the matrix interacted with it in a way to create this little u-shape thing also over here there's a missing segment like what happened i guess like the legs got bit off and broken off at the spine for this one and this one kind of argument would be put forth but it doesn't explain why this structure would be there this structure kind of points to some abnormality in the formation process possibly relating again we see a fracture along its boundary that then protrudes into it here and goes around this way seemingly maybe over that way too so like something to do with this prevented the legs from forming instead they formed the this u-shape in the the fossil that would be my thought it even looks to have maybe some kind of legs just moved over like a or maybe these over here kind of thing like they sort of formed and broke off because of the circumstances but they got lodged very adjacent which doesn't really make sense like if these legs are bitten off and then this thing gets retained in a stone like the legs would not be there or anything resembling the legs it shouldn't be just directly adjacent as if the legs were bitten off the shell was retained in its position the legs were left behind next to the shell and then fossilized it's way harder to really like parallel with chemistry physics and things like what are these are these atoms there's, there's details about them that kind of suggest they could be related to something of that nature. I'm not sure. I've tried to relate them to ammonites as well. Like, what would they be? If, if this is like a variation on the formation process of ammonites that's forming a different structure because it's not able to, like, wrap around in the same way, it more goes in a straight line and forms like this spine like right here along this spine if we kind of look at this right here and compare it to shallograms it's very reminiscent of this kind of thing just not quite as coalesced in like a single unit it's more like I mean, kind of a single unit, obviously, but more like space looking. But then with more details around it, where like the fact that a center pillar type thing was forming of that nature, it also allowed for current flows off the side, kind of like gal galactic arms. Like this doesn't form galactic arms out of it, like maybe there and there kind of thing. Like had this been able to more cohesively form structure outward maybe it might have like tend itself to something more of this nature is what's going on where that is what's happening where it is branching off of some like current flow that's being induced down a channel like this where like the head is where it feeds in the back like it comes in this way out this way this is like a spray nozzle or it's spraying out this way but coming in here so it's kind of like it comes in this way out to the point out and along the way it like has to basically spiral and form these discrete discs like this like these that then stack and then at their boundary uh, produce current flows at the sides in this instance 
another one with some gaps. This also, if we look closely, we can see like this material between here and between here, between here, between here, between here, like systematically between two. And yet the two are connected as one. Like this is seemingly as two legs that are connected as one, but they're one, two again, one, two again, one, two again, but one, two again, but one, two again, but one. It's almost like a current flow went out this way, ran into resistance and came back that way and like folded in on itself and created these little hooks one after another that like wrap back up into this space but don't have the starting like leg. Like this is this leg goes this way and goes around to the to the right of this little crevice and then it reaches a final point where it then bends back out from here down this way bends back this way and kind of just flows in the crevice i would say that's going on if these are current induced which i'm fairly certain they are like I'm, I'm basically convinced they are th they are current induced. It's just a matter of figuring out what's going on then after that, where it's a little more complex than um, shallograms. This one's interesting. It's rolled up and it looks like it even has a chakra above it and a base and a surrounding region. That, oh, I see, I see. It's eyeballs. And then the spine, and then like the f head. So this is like the head. Head, just, just a head. Which then this portion, interesting. The head, this portion, looks kind of like one of the rolled up trilobites as a whole. Kind of like, like when they roll up into a ball. fracture right next to it through it something going on along there as well pointing at it these these are just pointing at it they got the pole if this is a pole it's pointing at this pole it's kind of triangular Lots of cool stuff there. Darn, this one's sold. Relatively abnormal looking head, like not balanced maybe because it turned, but looks like a freaking tumor there. Maybe the head is so like ball-like because it's protruding out and where like the rest of the head kind of falls down this way. But the current flow itself was like this way along this spine and uh, didn't fall down here. So it kind of ballooned here. Which then maybe created resistance 
which then cause bends of the current off to the sides, inducing these like protrusions out of the eye regions. Very cool. A little creepy too. They kind of make me think of like end times insects. If anyone's ever read F. Paul Wilson Night World, that's what it makes me think of. Unfortunately, not the best images. Pardon me, sir or madam. Looks like some kind of fracture may be involved there, but hard to say. It's just hard to say what's going on in this one. Definitely some spots. But <clears throat> Again, a fracture there. Fracture there, fracture there. That seems to be pointing at like that. Basically, like these weak points aren't aren't a coincidence. They're there because current flow was more prevalent through them through those locations, which left a relative void, so it's weak, a weak point, which then macroscopically is observable as these cracks in the rocks, that then when the current was flowing through the cracks that was there, that was creating the cracks, they, it like, did this. That's... this here right along this edge doop doop like they're all cut doop 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 and then here it's real clear they follow this crack this crack over here and it didn't like sever these two but it severed these real clean these like five perfectly severed at the crack and then these as well with that one a little way inward for some reason and then uh, inward again, but and then this boundary, this this two this foot or whatever reaches exactly up to that crack, and then this crack kind of goes up, holding a boundary. Generally, looks like this side is pretty anomalous. I think it's large and bulky compared to this. This looks much more sharp. Like even before before this actual point, like in this region, it it's not the same height over. It's narrower than this this one right here, which should have this protrusion out that way in a similar way. Like it should be like there, and then also whatever's going on there. Like what's that? Oh my God! What's that, guys? It's like an eyeball looking thing or like one of these, but it's forming over here where this should go across and continue and connect up there. Like this, this structure right here is this. And yet within it is this anomalous tumor that it would have to be explained as some kind of growth on the thing. But it, it's like at this point along this current path I would say that's one of the stronger proofs I've found so far that these are not fossils. <clears throat> this one just severed at the end and yet it's retained in the rock. I guess it could break within the rock and be like shifted before the rock solidifies around it enough to hold it in the matrix and then it would have this piece dislodge the side it's still a little odd 
worth noting if we're going to say, well, maybe these are not even fossils, and it's very important that things like that happen, to, like, note them and maybe provide some kind of explanation, almost like the radioactive decay, like a chunk at the end. It's not a stable. Like, if this is atoms, maybe, maybe the spine is, like, the protons, like, the disc part, and where, like, a, perhaps a eddy formed and formed the disc, and then that behaves like a proton, where off the sides, these neutron legs are the ma masses that hold the, the eddy in place form, but down at the end, the eddy got so big as to be like the whole tail and it just wasn't stable in this instance kind of thing and broke off but only broke off somewhat maybe Okay, this one's rolled up. We can see some eyeballs thing, some little specks there. Damn, this thing's big, it's like fist sized. Okay, so this one's rolled up, which is worth noting. Maybe it's like a short circuit. Darn, this one's sold. This was a good one because it has gaps. Like we can see a gap back there between the leg, a gap back there, gap there, gap there, gap there. Like anomalous things, and it, especially the ones back near the spine. Like, what's up with that? And the only explanation to things like that is some kind of force applied on the region that pushed it aside and broke it away from the main body, but it was still, like, held in place still. And just things of that nature. This one looks pretty clean all around. Still got fracture at the end of its body. Like a... Place of resistance. Like a current flow was going along that way and that led to resistance in this region. Like anything trying to go past that current that ran into that current which then built up resistance, then maybe caused like a conglomeration of materials to then saturate out as, to precipitate out as this trilobite. Literally kind of thing. Unclear, unclear. This one's just got lots of trial bites, let's see. Little ones, big ones. Also notice these splotches. I would say these splotches are unformed trial bites. Like they have similar characteristics. They even have like a bigger splotch behind this one, for instance. Although this one looks pretty white. But I would still say these have 
have a relationship to the formation pro process of trilobites. And if so, they would demonstrate they're not fossils because they're not like in a fossil form. They're in some like early phase form of just subtly starting to induce the shape. This one, another one with just some subtle imbalances throughout it, but this one looks pretty relatively fossil-like, like in terms of its anomalies, nothing that I can point to is so substantial. There's a subtle fracture there going towards there. I don't see any breaks in the rock around it per se, except for that little thing. Which isn't even necessarily a break in the rock, but... This one at least has some stuff. Like there. I don't see the imprint of a trilobite, but I do see subtle features of a trilobite, like its overall shape. Its overall shape. It's spine with this white material down the middle. This one, like what happened here? What happened here? This, if a current flow is going down the spine generally and propagating out from it and isn't able to get out and just flows into this region, like it would kind of make sense that it could do that at some point. At some points it would do that and even made this leg a little like bend down this way, exaggerating it to where it's not doing that the same over any other legs so much, just subtly, but just the bends of these are a little anomalous because what happened here it, it's just millions of years are attributed to this so anything could happen so it becomes time erosion coincidence again which is not really an explanation for anything it's cheating and i'm gonna call you guys out for it if you keep doing it because time erosion coincidence inadequate Inadequate. If you don't got an answer, then don't act like you got an answer. If that's what your answer is, is time erosion coincidence. It's weak. Holding the microphone, making like the amount of books published based on time erosion coincidence that are then propagated as if they're fact. Which is part of the problem I have with people calling things pseudoscience and like one of the basis being, oh, it's not developed as much. Like, dude. We need to go back to the time of Isaac Newton at all, when uh, it was just kind of, it was much more like whoever's saying things that makes sense than credential-based. Credential-based is becoming so overwhelming. It's just literally stagnated the conversation. This is it. We figured it out. We're working on it still, but we're fi we figured it out. We're working on it still. Dudes, you're holding the microphone and you're preventing other ideas from surfacing is what you're doing. Stop. Stop. If you don't know, admit you don't know. Admit it. Just admit it. I know trilobites, it's hard for people to admit that they're, like, not fossils. Ammonites, they're gonna have to admit. I've proven that. I've got, like, ridiculous quantities of close analysis proving that ammonites are not fossils. So the same would go for trilobites. I'm almost unequivocally, they're not fossils without even looking at them. Just based on the information surrounding them. They formed in this time frame. Yeah, probably not fossils. Probably not fossils. 
based on the fact that ammonites are considered fossils when they're not. This, things of this nature, this is like a current flow. That's what happens here. That's what current does. Current does interesting things of this nature. It also doesn't like laminar, repetitive, uh, patterned things of this nature, but it also like breaks through resistance that can build. Like, I guess there was resistance over here. Right along the middle, maybe, maybe even something to do with like it being centered along the spine. Like it didn't happen here or here as much, although it maybe it happened at like a quarter as well. Quarter, half, not so much in the bigger region. So maybe it just couldn't like break into the pressures of the larger region, but it so it broke in at this boundary of the center of this of the body towards like a weak point like maybe i don't i'm just guessing based on this rock obviously that over here was maybe more exposed to the exterior so it could vent that way more easily so it did like by going this way rather than this way but obviously that's a complete guess Although this looks pretty aged, like it was like that. Like it, they didn't break the rock and then have its this be like a break surface. This was probably actually exposed enough to become like that on its own. Another one that... Uh, Probable molding on real fossil, probable Moroccan restoration. This one's said to be a restoration from Morocco, I guess. Very, like, odd, I guess, overall. One. So it's got, like, eyeballs that are kind of like these things, which is interesting. It's got eight of them. Like chamber regions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chamber regions that maybe are certain energy places. Like, uh, I don't know what to make of it. This looks a little off balance, a little asymmetrical. Everything else is maybe generally symmetrical enough or just like explainable by some breaking off of this for example here as well also see a fracture going through here that looks to go that way and maybe that way possibly here goes up along this edge though another something over there maybe uh, maybe also goes that way Hard to say. This is interesting, the place where like the layer, the uh, current got between layers and maybe interacted with this trilobite formation process by going under this layer and upwelling in places. Again, I don't know why it would just like form such a different material in such a high concentration. I like, guess. Although it's possible these little specks are like similar materials. Really present current flow there, obviously there. These are relatively parallel, although this is not. Hard to say what we're looking at opposite face wise. where this is I don't know okay next one again with the uh, like differentiation of the material in, inside of the space of the trilobites just like ammonites which points to differentiation by current flows these legs I guess this is just shifted like the spine 
they just shift it over kind of like a slip disc and the legs all shifted with it which is kind of strange that the legs would stay attached but the disc would separate perfectly along both sides and then it would just shift a little bit over and not just like completely out And it shifted, interesting, this very center of the spine, it shifted off, like, so that its center, the center of this disc is now at the edge of the spine, and then the edge of the disc is at the center of the spine. Time erosion coincidence would be applied to that, like, oh, it's just a coincidence the disc has shifted exactly that much. But, like, if you think about it, why is it even doing that? Like, either it's got enough pressure to remove it entirely from the trilobite fossil before it fossilizes, or it doesn't. Like, why is it subtly doing it, and it's perfectly subtly doing it at, at exactly the center here and the, the edge here? Like, that doesn't make sense. I would say that's another proof, like another point in the not fossils category, which has only begun to have a tally. So the tallies are maybe not that substantial in the, like the list, but like the details, that's pretty compelling to me, as well as just coupled with this leg going this way. We also see this leg goes over and physically folds. There's a fold there, fold there. So it's, what's happening here is definitely a current flow going out that reaches a resistance and it just runs into it and folds back against it. And in this case, maybe when it ran into it and folded back, it like pushed against it enough so that the opposing sides resistance, which I guess wasn't there. Like this also happens where the feet meet the edge of the rock. So maybe resistance on this side was low and on this side was high. So when a current flowed out in both directions, producing the legs, this leg pushed into this side and met resistance where this leg kind of was able to freely flow more so. And uh, so like it just shoved it over this way and out, but only to a point where it's stabilized, where this current locked in with that boundary, this current locked in with the center of this, like the boundary, whatever was shaping the spine as a whole, along it, flowing along the spine, locked in the, the segment at a new balance point. That makes sense. Like, then it would make sense for why it would subtly shift Subtle shifts by fossilization processes are much harder to explain, in my opinion. Like, this is bullshit to just arbitrarily say fossils can do that and hand wave time erosion coincidence and call it a day. It's, it's cheating, and it's only cheating because people don't know that there's an alternative explanation. It's, there's no competition. When it's just, oh, they're trilobites, they're fossils... And then, like, step one is move past. And then we're like, okay, these are the types of trilobites. And then here's when they lived, and here's blah, blah, blah. And, like, the first step of what are these has not rigorously been analyzed, but it has been concluded to be true. And obviously, I can see why, like, everyone would agree, generally speaking, in the scientific community, these are fossils and would move past step one. But I'm saying we move past the step that was false. That was not the, the conclusion was false. We needed to draw a conclusion. What are these? We had options. Obviously, the most clear one that anyone just looking at it, a child looking at it, would say fossil. But if we really look closely, it comes to light, just like many other conclusions, that the observations do not really match the conclusion. And so we got to go back to step one, which is what are these? 
I don't know exactly, but they're current induced. Okay, let's keep going. Another one. Cool, cool. The spacing, although it's lifted. This is lifted, so maybe underneath there it's not spaced. It's almost like a tail coming off the middle of the spine, though, and maybe not even having a spine, really. It's probably having less of a formed spine because this tail is elevated off of it. Seemingly running into more of a resistance over here, so it's just ramped up it. It's really incredible that they do that. Perfect straight line here, that's interesting. And then ramps up. Pretty perfect straight line there too. With bends in that way. Uh, nothing uh, popping out to me because we can't tell what's going on under there. That's where the most I'm most interested in is what's going on between here. Like the boundary is pretty cohesive. There's, I mean, nothing so compelling that they're not fossils there. Another one with a clear break between the, and again, relatively centered at the middle of the body here before the head. Head centered here, break. Also at the middle, the spine is coming off. I wonder if this one's centered. It looks a little not centered. A little more towards the head than the, like, centered. This one looks very centered. Okay, uh, nothing else really popping out. It really looks like another eyeball when it does this. Like these are called eyeballs. This is not, I don't think, what this, I don't know what this is called, but it looks like another one. This one is called a Alabama fossil crinoid crinus rare Mississippian trilobite age. So it's not a trilobite, I guess, but it does have trilobite esque features, I feel. That's a little. Yeah, it's a crinoid though, it's more like this. Uh, I guess like this. This is more like, I guess what that one is, like these. Which are again like the spine. So it's kind of like the spine only. It also noticeably has these openings in them. Very cool. I've not looked at these closely. Basically like a current flowing through the center, through it, but then spiraling and along layers, just like the shallogram, it fans out from the center and we can see the lines coming out around it in all directions in this around it. Sort of like a chakra and a shallogram and an ammonite, but with something going down the middle this like that's incredible it's literally got a like a ammonite shape there in the crinoid time erosion coincidence this one even right here looks kind of ammonite-esque the way it is sideways
I'm gonna go ahead and just say trilobites are not fossils. They're not fossils. They're fossils of current flows. We gotta find anomalous ones. So let's go back here. It literally wraps around too soon. Doesn't really have a leg, it just wraps back around. Also this is kind of rounded. The whole of it is like warped, a little warped to the side. Like I guess like this from uh, from your angle. Another one, anomalous legs. I mean, we could go through these and find anomalies, I'm sure, that would disprove that there are fossils, if people really thought about them. I'm not sure what the anomalies are that they're pointing to exactly in these. I don't really feel like reading the paper. I assume it's just the lack of a leg, maybe coupled with this material here for some reason. Close-up abnormality, illustrating SSI on fourth thoracic segment. SSI. Single segment injuries. Okay. They're just called injuries. It's hilarious. It's hilarious because they're not fossils, and they're, like... What's the word when it's an inanimate object that's like given like personality traits? <laughs> Trilobites love to eat blah 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 blah. It's like dude. They're not fossils. <laughs> All the papers about that. that's the thing. Like if you read this, any of these are gonna be like trilobite exoskeletons. Already assumes fossils. It literally already assumes fossils. I know it's been established, but because it's not true, it's been assumed all along. Spotting fossil anomalies. What is it that? That's cool. These are in a line. These are in a line angled from it with the, like it's widening and then it forms enough space for another one. Over here, these are in a line. This is in a line, but it's not like parallel to this one. You know, it's kind of arced line. What does it say? Russell and Pat found some unexpected examples of specimens with additional spines. They also showed that these specimens occurred in one of the largest growth stages of these animals. Given that they found no evidence of injuries, Russell and Pat concluded that these abnormal spines likely reflect genetic complications. It's basically just applying some biological explanation to what is current induced. We can even see right here, this like right across here, right across there. What's that doing there? I would say that's conclusive proof. These are not fossils because we see a boundary within the fossil. And at that boundary, anything up here doesn't have these dots. These dots just hard stop beyond this boundary. 
where over this side, all of this side and this side are like on this side of the boundary. Also, even over here is much less dotted looking. I would say that proves unequivocally these are not fossils. I mean, they, they're coming up with fossil biological explanations because, they, because of the initial interpretation that they are fossils, but they're finding the anomalies. Like, this is weird. What could be doing this? It must be, because we interpret them to be living creatures, it must have been a genetic complication. I mean, no, no other explanation can be provided. It's not, no evidence of injuries, which is just like a break or a snap or something more current and do still. That's not a, a, <laughs> like explained as something biting it. Examining museum specimens in this way presents important insights into the hidden aspects of the fossil record. Okay, that's all we get is those ones. There might be something to that one anomalous as well. I don't see it immediately. Maybe the fact the spine continues into the head. That's I don't know if it usually does that. Like not in the that is a little odd. Oh, maybe that that is odd. I don't know if they explain it. So again, an injured trilobite was collected. Injured trilobite. Notice their focus is on the trilobite. Like there's no focus on the surrounding matrix whatsoever. We can't even see the surrounding matrix. We can't conclude anything about the surrounding matrix from this image. Where the other, like here, I'm looking at the surrounding matrix. The surrounding matrix. Let's find a good example like this. This fracture is relevant. Like it's not. It's, if they only showed this, like we wouldn't really see the detail. I mean, kind of see this one, but in the, it wouldn't always be the case. Where like here, we don't really see the surrounding matrix. Something's going on there. Or something there, but whether or not that's like etched by the people etching around it, if there are any fractures in the rock, like things of that nature, are not clear because because they're fossils, and so the matrix is irrelevant. That's what happens. Is it? The matrix, which is relevant, becomes irrelevant when we interpret it falsely to be fossils. And then we just don't look at the details. We're too zoomed in on the fossils to even like notice the correlation between the fossil and the, the rock itself and its the rock structure. That would point to, like, there's a connection here. This fossil and this rock have a connection in their formation process not here so it looks like just some anomalies i don't really feel like reading their anomalies besides just looking at them i don't see any more images discussion malformed due to predatory taps typically have vu and or w shaped injuries v and these shapes make me think of like a river, a glacier, and maybe something else making a W shape, like multiple rivers. And that looks like teeth. But it also, if you look at the matrix around it, it continues over here. Like, what's up with that? And then up this way, like, this right here is relatively parallel to that. This kind of matches this. There's definitely a connection over here to what's going on with the trilobite itself.
And then the trident. The trident is just another piece of evidence, really, that they're not fossils. That they're related to the Earth expansion process. If we go to India, where ancient Dwarka was attacked by a vortex weapon over here. So the vortex weapon technology existed in ancient Dwarka, the Brahmastra, and, and etc., were vortex based. And, uh, but if we look around down here, like, there's a trident. I wonder if there's like a, any sort of trilobite feature behind it, like an eyeball there. That'd be so cool if we could find like trilobite features like right here. Spent like the spine, the spine going like this way. Hard to say. I mean, possibly, but it's real subtle. If if so. And then the, uh, the trident in the Pacific on the magnetic anomaly map that is related to the formation of Hawaii and Baja California or Baja BC process, accretion of Baja California material into British Columbia and others. This here with the trident up this way. Maybe there's a relationship, like current flows doing something of this nature that then are inducing a trident type thing. So when I see a trident on a trilobite, it's not like they're walking around with a trident on their head. Oh. Like a unicorn. Like, no, no, this is like a protrusion, a growth, like an umbilical cord kind of thing that was feeding into the uh, structure forming behind it, that is the trilobite, and that went through these channels to then flow this way under, under pressure, surrounding pressure, and then solidified the channels as an umbilical cord type thing of the, trilo of the trident that then connects to the trilobite. And at times we find them like this and say, wow, these had tridents. No, they didn't have tridents because they never existed as living beings. They're all geological in origin. Let's see, looks like we can't find any images there. So certainly there's ample documentation of malformations and anomalies that are just attributed to, as we can see here, healed injuries, basically that they're fossils, attributed to the living being healing and going through things of that nature. <clears throat> That's not true though. But I mean, again, I see why. I see why we're arriving at that conclusion. Examining abnormal Silurian trilobites, let's see. Okay, that's this one again. Oh, sh they found an extra little mound there. <laughs> Just an extra mound. Don't worry about it, Cass. What? That's just what these creatures do. They just do what they want. They don't care. They're like honey badgers. They don't give a shit. Sexual combat, huh? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Ugh. 
The sexual selection and interest-specific combat is known to be an important aspect of the evolutionary process and was almost certainly pervasive in the history of life. We're going to attribute that down now to trilobites. Here we identify one such morphology suggesting combat behavior in the trilobite. Let's just get the PDF. Arrows indicate the central keel, dash lines indicate position shown in section of broken trident. Section through base of tines and haft, showing outer cuticle and calcite filling. Cross sections, I guess. Square indicates location of C sem image. Here, this. Showing cuticle structure. Let's just go to discussion real quick. Variation in shape for each taxon and grouping seen in the PCA and ANOVA analyses reflect the three combat strategies of shoveling, prying, grasping, and fencing, lifting. <laughs> oh my god. We're just attributing so many characteristics to these things based on a false interpretation and paper after paper it doesn't matter how many papers are written that's again that's my problem with people calling ideas even if they're false calling it pseudoscience it's just rude it's just rude because it's not appreciating that all of science is a work in progress and things that are that you person saying pseudoscience believe to be true will be proven to be false and therefore will be seen as pretty much pseudoscience so like chill out with that shit it's really elitist i don't want to like put those terms to these people they're, they're good people part of me people making these using these terms we're all just growing children that have been labeled adults for no reason because uh, that's how we punish one another, really, is by saying, oh, you're an adult now, we can punish You're totally susceptible to punishment now. What, you're, you're an adult? You're, you're subject to the laws of the land we made up for adults. Yeah, of course, children are protected somewhat because it makes some sense, but we're going to get them too. No, what? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I was just saying that you guys are terrible people and you deserve to die. That's it. So we're gonna kill you. Here's the vaccine, you should take it. Did you like this vaccine? We said take it. Exercise, social distancing. <laughs> More like don't share information. Don't, ex don't interact, that's a they're literally killing us fucking morons. Alright guys. Alright guys. I'll be back for the next one. Peace out.